Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, our Let's Play series against Hartwig. It is May 5th, 1942 in our series, and we have begun the counteroffensive against the Japanese in the Pacific, at least a limited counteroffensive. Uh, we did land and take Savi a couple of turns back, and we've also landed on Midway Island as well, uh, and drove the Japanese back there also, so things have been going well in this limited counteroffensive against the Japanese. I say limited because we have yet to face the Kidobutai, the Japanese carrier fleet, and so in May of 1942, without having damaged the fleet beyond a single uh, carrier being damaged by submarine-based torpedoes, uh, you know, we're not really to a point yet where we can engage the enemy on equal terms. Uh, but we are at least in a position where when we have an idea of where the enemy is, uh, we can counterpunch elsewhere. Or, you know, perhaps soon go for a uh, assault on the Japanese fleet, but I don't think I'm ready for that. Meanwhile, we can see here the turn starting off with some submarine action. Here we've got the U.S. submarine Gren Grenadier uh, assaulting, well not assaulting, but attacking a light Japanese transport ship near Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands here. So, looking to put a Japanese merchantman on the bottom of the ocean, you can see a lot of uh, gunfire is going on. There was a torpedo that was a hit, but no explosion, but we can see a lot of three-inch shells uh, crashing into the enemy transport. Um, and they did manage to get a hit on us. Another hit, but no explosion there with a Mark 14. And so, yeah. It looks like we got 13 shell hits and one torpedo hit, actually, which did uh, detonate, as well as a couple of duds. We probably sank that enemy transport. Yep, we got the, uh, the blub, 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 blub sound of the uh, enemy ship sinking, so that is almost certainly the result of that AKL. Uh, so we've gotten two Japanese cargo ships sunk in the last three turns, which doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, for us, compared to what we were doing before, uh, that is uh, bona fide happy times in our submarine campaign. Meanwhile, we've got two P-40 Warhawks uh, intercepting nine Japanese Oscars over Batavia. I think I ordered my ace of the Dutch Air Force to transfer to another base. Uh, so hopefully he survives this. I don't think he should be flying anymore. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, looks like maybe we... No, we damaged a Japanese Oscar, but no, nothing was shot down on either side in that aerial battle. Further air raids here at Batavia. Some bombers coming in this time. Just a lone P-40 intercepting. And uh, we claimed one Oscar shot down. Four Sally's damaged, two Lilies damaged between the flak and the intercept. And another Oscar sweep. All of our aircraft have been batted out of the sky, like annoying flies. And uh, some bombing here going on in the Philippines. Okay. A lot of air activity this turn. At least it seems like a lot of air activity to me. Moving into the PM phase for air operations. Okay. Doing well, Flying Scotsman. Hope you're doing well as well. Another hit, but no explosion. This one by the Silver Sides uh, near the island of Hokado. Hokado. That was a big, fat, juicy transport it was firing its torpedoes at. That would have been a nice kill, uh, but no kill as it is. I think that does it for the PM phase of air operations, and we'll move into the uh, ground combat phase. So the Japanese quickly take uh, Pao Tao, which is uh, in northeastern China here. Uh, we don't have any troops there. I don't think I think we pulled them all out. That's a very difficult area to supply. I didn't see the purpose in fighting there. Japanese bombardment at Batavia. That's sort of a daily thing we expect now. You can see here the Japanese did lose one vehicle destroyed. We lost 13 casualties here. Not really much in the way of suppression. I didn't see them use naval bombardments at Batavia this turn either. So our troops got a nice little respite there. Meanwhile, Japanese bombardment at Clark Field, where our uh, ground troops are rapidly being depleted of their supplies. 
few casualties on our end. And then our shock attack here, hopefully finishing off the 53rd Naval Guards unit at Midway. And we did. We destroyed the Japanese defending unit here. 522 Japanese casualties, no allied casualties. 37 infantry squads destroyed, 44 non-combatants, and 6 guns destroyed. So that Naval Guard unit is finished off. There should be nothing left of the enemy on that island. So we'll take a look at Midway. But it looks like the cleaning, or cleaning, the clearing operations of Midway and uh, Savi, I believe, are both complete. So we now have complete control, and all mopping up operations have completed. Uh, so that, the, both of those islands should be fully back in allied hands. I'm curious. I, I remember looking last turn, but I'm pretty sure the port and airfield capacity, not in great shape. Uh, both bases are likely destroyed. I don't know if he realizes he's doing a favor destroying Batavia like a G-Man. I mean, Batavia is not an oil producing facility, so... So, like, yes, you destroy some industry. If we take a look at what Batavia has, you destroy potentially some light industry, which Japan doesn't really have a shortage of. You destroy potentially a small amount of heavy industry, which he hasn't even damaged yet, by the way, those bombardments. Resources, maybe that matters a little bit. There's still not very much there. And manpower, there's not very much there. So... It doesn't hold that much oil. Um, Batavia right now, I mean, I guess he doesn't know what's there, but there's only 300 oil in storage. There is some 24,000 fuel in storage. I suppose you could think there's more than that. Um, the 36,000 supply would be a nice thing for him to have, but it's not a game changer. Uh, he's already taken the the vast uh, horde or holds or hordes or whatever of Palembang and Surabaja. Those are the main places where you can expect to take huge quantities and we actually and, and granted there's no way for him to know this but we drained java pretty damn effectively what during that period of time where xgrg was not closing the port down or the ports on the dutch east indies down and so we were actually able to pull a lot of resources out uh, meanwhile if we take a look at the intelligence report for this turn two japanese air-to-air -air losses one destroyed on the field and three ops losses against just two operational losses for the Allies. So if we take a look here, three Oscars were shot down, two of them in air-to-air -air combat over Batavia. That's kind of surprising. One Ops lost, so three Oscars downed altogether. One Dina, one Tina, uh, one Glenn. We lost a Catalina operationally, and we lost a P-40E operationally. I believe that was the Dutch P-40Es. Uh, if we go to the top pilots, no pilots lost to this turn, so good result for us. I wonder if we've got multiple Dutch aces now. This guy had four kills in his MIA. I don't know if he was MIA before. A Berk. And actually, we've got a LJ Snowick as an ace with five kills in the Dutch Air Force. Uh, I'm curious if we go to the... Uh, it's, it's ops report, right? Not combat. Okay. A whole bunch of conversions of aircraft stuff. Does it say any one thing about kills? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Soviets activated? That can't be right. I'm confused. <laughs> Soviets not active. Huh? I must be looking at the wrong. Does it say Soviets activated? Yeah, I still can't move them, so they're definitely not activated. I wonder if. Is there something wrong with the replay information? Also, SIGINT is empty, which doesn't make a lot of sense. There's something fishy going on. Something weird, because SIGINT is blank. What am I looking at over here? I suppose it could be a sync bug. I haven't had that since Hartwig took over. We should both be using the, the same version of the game. I, I shared with the version I was using with him, so I don't think it's a sync error. Um, what is uh, What is this show...
Sorry guys, I'm just trying to see. Why is this the SIG end is blank? That's very strange. Huh. I'll have to ping him and see if there's something up there. You never heard of the Soviet naval invasions of mainland Japan in May of 42? No, Sarge, I have not. Um, meanwhile, we will, let's see here. Ship sunk. We do have the AKL here claiming uh, that was sunk near Bikini. So that's a victory value of three. It's a 2,000 tonner. We only used, well, we used three salvos of torpedoes. How many are left on the... Uh, so we used up almost all of its deck ammo, uh, but we still have a reasonable amount of torpedo ammunition. One in the Ford, one of the Ford tubes, the other three Ford tubes are both two out of three. So we've actually got five salvos pointing forward, three salvos pointing rear. Uh, so we're still in pretty good shape from a torpedo ammunition perspective, but the deck gun ammo is obviously a bit short. I will say that if there's a sink error, that does make me wonder about one other thing which I saw here, which kind of stood out is we are claiming that we found an enemy APD task force, two APDs moving northwest, which would be this direction, which makes me a little bit nervous if he is bringing in any kind of fast transport for a landing. So if he's swinging around the delta here near Rangoon, he could be going for Ramiri Island. That island is not currently garrisoned, and it would give him not really a direct road into Burma, but it would potentially allow him to flank our position in Burma, especially if he could establish an airbase there. Now it is a dot base, so there's nothing built up there yet. It would take time, but it certainly would be something that he could, he could threaten our flank or at least get a cheap victory here or there um, landing there. Additionally, perhaps he would think he could land easily at Akeab uh, or Koza Barzar, both of those would be potentially lightly defended bases. Akiab does have a garrison there at the moment, but they're all Indian cavalry and uh, motorized support, so I don't think they'd fight back a landing of Japanese troops very well. See if there's a sink bug. Any discrepancies for the combat report? Oh, we could take a look at that real quick. The weird thing is there's nothing was populated in the intel report, which I've never, like, I've seen sink errors before. I've never seen sink errors where we didn't, like, where we didn't actually get an intel report the bikini sub attack seems to have played out exactly as is morning air attack at batavia played out as is the morning air attack second morning air attack at batavia played out as we saw it um i think all of these attacks look the same they don't look different everything looks the same as what we saw those bombing raids I don't see anything that stands out as being different. Pow Tau fell just as uh, the replay showed. Ground combat at Batavia, exactly as was shown. Clark Field was exactly as shown. Midway Island was exactly as shown. So it all looks the same. It doesn't look to me like there was a sink error. I'm confused why it would say, whoops, not this. What I'm very confused about, though, is why it says Soviets activated here. And I didn't, like, none of this, this operational stuff doesn't make sense. We don't have half of these ships yet. I did open up the um, scenario for, um, I did actually open up the scenario for, the invasion of Japan. So there's a 45 scenario for an invasion of Japan because I was looking to see if the game included, there's a, there was a single squadron of uh, Mexican fighter aircraft that operated out of Clark Field in the Philippines in 1945. I was curious if the game included them. So I did open that up, um, but then I closed it before the replay completed. So I suppose it could be pulling from like one of those ops files, but it wouldn't make sense because we just watched the replay now, I don't know why it would still be pulling that information, but these resizes in these aircraft would make sense based on 
a 45 scenario. Yeah, the Aztec Eagles, like a G-Man. That's what I was looking for. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Anyway. Um, so it seems like some of the reports are off for this replay. Not the combat reports, but the SIGINT is blank, so... I don't know. I was curious. I guess we could look and see if the Aztec Eagles are in here. It would be a uh, group reinforcement. Um, I don't see any any nation nationality listed for Mexico. I suppose they might just be like a squadron under the uh, under the U.S. and they'd be a forty five arrival, presumably. They were fighting, I think, in April. So. I believe they're flying Thunderbolts. Were they the 507th? Mm. No, they were the 201st. I don't know when they would arrive. It'd be a fighter group, right? Or at least fighters or fighter bombers. I don't know why I thought they were the 507th. Yeah, I don't see anything for them. So maybe they're not in the game? But I could also just be quickly scrolling over them. Also, I'm looking on the left, and they're probably a fighter squad or not a fighter group. Oh, here they are. So this would be the Aztec Eagles, the 201st fighter squadron. Flying Thunderbolts, which is what they flew. So yeah, that's cool. I've got the uh, only squadron of fighter aircraft uh, that uh, Mexico deployed to World War II. And interestingly enough, they flew in the Pacific. So there they are, part of the 58th fighter group. They are considered American, so they pull, presumably they pull from American pilots, which kind of takes away from them actually not being American. But I can understand why you wouldn't create a pilot pool and a <laughs> squadron list for a single squadron, for a single nation, for a single squadron. That would probably be, even for War in the Pacific, that would be a little bit much. In any event, that's cool. I didn't actually look to see when they uh, when they show up. Um, look for them again. 201st. So they show up in March of 45. Do we get any French planes? Well, the French do exist. Not to like derail this whole stream. Uh, it does look like we get two squadrons of French aircraft. They arrive in July of 1945. A fighter, French fighter aircraft. Actually, that's all they are. So there is a, a French nationality, despite the fact that there's only 32 aircraft in two squadrons. That's interesting. <laughs> An interesting decision. Um, now, the French do have some mods where they play pretty pred predominantly. There's a Focus Pacific mod where... There's considerable numbers of uh, French equipment that are involved. But in the base game, you can see there's two uh, Spitfire squadrons here um, in May, or sorry, in July of 45. They both arrive in the United Kingdom, but you can obviously transfer them. Although by the time they get from, well, no, it goes till 46. So you could use them for a little bit. There are other French, there are other French things like warships and other things like that. So uh, if we go to ship availability, for example, and uh, uncheck everything except French. You can see here that we get the battleship Richelieu. We get a couple of ammunition, or I guess Corvettes, actually. Light cruiser Georges Lagos. Uh, destroyers Le Fortune and El Quion. Light cruiser Duguay Trion. I'm pronouncing these all terribly. And then a couple of patrol frigates as well. So you do get a battleship uh, with the French. Uh, all of this stuff comes online 
Uh, looks like the Richelieu actually comes online in April of 44. So that's kind of earlier than I realized. Uh, but the rest of the stuff is, is mid 45. Okay. All right. So with that being said, there's enough just random looking up, looking up of stuff. By the way, thanks for the follow, Sir Smokes and the Blade Killer. So I am a little concerned. Uh, we were kind of going back to this. I'm a little concerned with the fast transports perhaps spotted moving northwest. Uh, and so I have ordered a couple of things to try and intercept them. Uh, we have ordered our bombers here at uh, the base at Chittagong uh, to bomb them, at least some of them anyway. So we've ordered the A-29 Hudson's Albacore 1s, which are basically, whoops, Albacore 1s, which are basically Vildebeest's, or no, no, they're not, never mind. They're a different biplane, but they're biplane torpedo bombers of the Royal Navy, although we don't have torpedoes at this base, so they would fly in and drop bombs instead. Uh, they would drop... 500 pounders, twin 500 pounders, which certainly can do enough damage to an APD. Uh, and the crews are actually experienced and trained in bombing uh, naval bombs. We have also ordered, not at this base, but uh, at uh, Calcutta, we have ordered our B-17s um, based here, I think. Wait, no. Am I clicking on the wrong base? Naval, naval. Oh, yeah, these B-17s. The 5th Bomb Group of the 23rd Bomb Squadron is ordered to skip bomb these bastards, coming in at 1,000 feet, low-altitude naval attack. Um, and then we have also ordered our PBYs at Rangoon to shift... Or not at Rangoon, sorry. We've ordered PBYs south of Cal uh, Calcutta, uh, these eight PBYs, to shift their patrol zones here. Um, I don't know why it says search. That, oh, it is naval search. That's the problem. It should be naval search. Really? Okay. Um, set on map. That's actually already where I want them. So we'll order them to search there. And then we've got these guys on naval attack. That's what it is. So the other group is doing 50% naval search, 50% naval attack. Uh, actually, no, they're all doing naval search. So we should switch it to naval attack if we want them to actually bomb. So we're going to get two of the four to go to naval bombing. Two of the four will go to naval search. And then here we're going to probably have about one of them on naval search and then the rest on naval bombs. So we'll have about five, uh, sorry, three Catalinas doing search routes to spy on these enemy ships. And then we'll have another uh, five or so set to bomb the enemy ships as they come up, as well as the B-17s and the Vildebees if they're really coming around for a landing at Ramir. Now, it's possible they may land at Ramiri before we get any aircraft on them bombing, uh, so we will see. Um, my carriers are way north uh, at Bombay, so nowhere near uh, this particular base. I don't see any indication of any other enemy ships. There are some ships down near Tavoy, so we had seven ships spotted here moving into bay or into the port at Mer Mergui. Uh, probably rearming or replenishing. These could be more APDs. They could be uh, a cruiser task force. We're really not sure what these guys are down here, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on them as well. Um, I, I guess they could be making a move for Ramir, uh, but they got pretty damn far without us seeing them. Uh, they probably hugged the coast. Also, the other thing just to consider with the game is that with task forces of this size, when you've only got a couple of APDs involved, they can escape relatively f strong patrol craft. So it's extreme or overcast, which makes seeing hard. Um, they're destroyer sized ships. So again, big ocean, small ships. If it was a task force of 30 ships, you'd spot them much sooner uh, than a task force of two fast moving, you know, ships like this in bad weather. Um, if we take a look at the weather report. Uh, that's not the right map. Weather. It looks like tomorrow is going to be rainy, so it may not even be something where we've got a good uh, visualization on these guys anyway, so they may sneak in under the rain clouds. You can see up here it says rain. Um, so we'll have to see how things play out, but I do have some aircraft set up to bomb these guys, and we'll see if we can, if we can accomplish that. I'm not set up to retake Port Blair yet, Sarge. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I think to take retake Port Blair, ideally what we would do is we'd, we would stage out of Little Andaman. So we would actually get some AKEs, some uh, replenishment ships. We would put them in the port here, and then we would just basically shuttle bombard Port Blair. So we'd have battleships move to Andaman. Once they're ready, then they would move into bombard Port Blair. They'd auto-return to Andaman and rearm, 
And that way you could probably get a bombardment in on Blair basically every other day or every day uh, to really reduce the, the enemy troops there. The problem with that is the last time we spotted the enemy carrier battle fleet, they were based out of Singapore. And so if we try to stage out a little Andaman with six battleships or something like that, and we start shuttle bombarding Blair, a couple of things with that. One, these guys are going to be able to get north in like two days. So we don't really have the time shy of wanting to fight a major carrier action or leaving a huge number of battleships hung out to dry. So we would probably have to commit our entire carrier fleet to provide sort of overwatch for the bombardment task forces at Port Blair. Um, Additionally, Port Blair itself is within easy range of Tevoy, which is a good airfield with uh, level four airfield capacity. It is also within easy range of Bangkok, which is only nine hex or 12 hexes away. Um, And so the enemy, in addition to being able to have the support of their uh, and Little Andaman is even closer, or actually it's 13 hexes away from Bangkok. Um, but Little Andaman is, is, and Port Blair are in easy bomber range from any of the land-based bombers. And so if we were to put our carriers over watching here, even that, uh, we would basically be chewing through our expert uh, naval aviators who would have to provide carrier you know, overwatch at a kind of a distance to stay out of range of enemy torpedo bombers. And frankly, at like four or five hexes of long range cap, they'd still be on the fringe of the Japanese torpedo bombers range. So we basically would be putting the carriers at risk from naval from land bombers. We'd be putting the battleships and the transports at risk of land based bombers. And we'd also be in easy reach, perhaps, of the last place that we spotted the enemy carrier battle fleet. So the last thing I really want to commit our carriers to is a battle where we are not under the cover of our own land-based aircraft because fighters out of Rangoon or uh, Sri Lanka would both not be able to cover our landing force or our carriers. The the distance would be too great, while also being able to be in reach of their land-based aircraft and their naval aircraft. It just is a really risky, really bad idea at this stage of the conflict. Until we deal with their carriers, I don't think it makes sense to risk our own carriers in an operation where the enemy land base air will play a role, their naval air will play a role, and our land base air will not play a role. Um, if we were talking about an operation closer to Rangoon, you know, if we're talking like up, up here um, or maybe back out here, if they were to land on uh, Ramiri and we were trying to retake that, that could make more sense. Uh, but as it is, I don't think it would make a lot of sense to do that. Um, Flying Scotsman, we don't know exactly where the Japanese carriers are. I think about a week to 10 days ago, we spotted them near Singapore. Um, and so we knew the entire carrier fleet or the majority of them were at Singapore. Um, since Hartwig has taken over, he may have moved them, but we don't have any intel on where they're at at the moment. Um, additionally, uh, one other thing they could be doing is if these aren't really APDs, if these are like destroyers and they're going in on a raid, I suppose he could be chasing our, uh, our transports, which just unloaded some cargo at Calcutta. These guys are withdrawing back toward Calcutta. Additionally, he could be trying to go after our own transport, our other transport task force here, which is trying to sneak in to Rangoon here, uh, with some AKLs along the coast. So we could turn these guys around back to go back to Calcutta as well. And in fact, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, rather than risk enemy raiders, these could be these could be raiders coming in because I don't actually have any uh, escorts with these guys. So that could be another thing going on there. Uh, meanwhile, we did take what was left of Midway here, so we can see the Japanese landing force is gone. They've been destroyed. Uh, the island is back in Allied hands, and we can see here that the island is in absolute ruins. Uh, you can see port damage, a hundred percent airfield service damage, a hundred percent airfield runway damage, 94%. I have staged my PBYs, which were at Curry Island into Midway. Uh, we've got a better supply situation there long-term. Um, and it's also a base. Um, they won't be impacted by the airfield service damage. I don't think, uh, because they're, they're float planes. So they should still be able to operate despite the service runway damage. Um, because they're going to be taking off from the ocean. And then the base force that we landed has sufficient aviation support to keep them up and running. That'll allow me to pull the AV, uh, the, the float plane tender, out, as well as the patrol craft at Curry, because I'm worried if the enemy does try and make any kind of counterattack or uh, raid near Midway, we won't have the strength to, to escort them away. 
Additionally, our fleet oiler did make it out and hasn't been torpedoed yet. So remember, we took a wide berth from Midway to avoid enemy subs around Las Cyan Island. It does look like that sub has continued moving west, or maybe even two of them right here. So we're going to have them cut back in behind the enemy subs and then move back to Pearl. Additionally, we've got some uh, tra the armored or I guess ammunition ships here, which are moving uh, back to Pearl as well. Uh, the USS Hornet is also moving back to Pearl. Um, you can see here we used up the vast majority of our sorties, um, 534 uh, max sorties uh, available and 175 are left. So we used almost 80% of our uh, aviation sorties uh, in those strikes on Midway. Uh, we have some additional troops that are on the way to Midway. We've got a coastal anti-aircraft um, unit, which had loaded up, I believe, back in Los Angeles. So now that Midway has fallen, these coastal anti-aircraft guns are going to go into Midway and provide that base with some additional anti-aircraft support. Our APDs, our fast transports, are already well clear of the Japanese submarines as far as we've seen them and are moving back to Midway. And then our battleships have almost made it all the way back to, or not Midway, back to Pearl and then our battleships here, the Warspite, Mississippi, New Mexico, Idaho, Oklahoma, New, New, uh, Nevada, and Colorado are probably two days steaming time from getting back to Pearl itself. Um, yeah, anyway, so our shipping, our large amount of shipping and uh, exposure to an enemy carrier raid is hopefully almost back to Pearl and safe. Uh, meanwhile, at Savi, oh my god, you can see the Japanese have been completely evicted from Savi as well. The uh, situation there is a little bit better from a uh, airfield and port and whatnot damage perspective, 66, 50, and 38. Uh, I want to say that's dropped considerably. I want to say it was like 80 in the 80s last turn. So we do have engine 18 engineers at the base. We don't have any engineer vehicles, though, so I'm kind of surprised the repairs would be occurring that quickly. Uh, we are low on supply there, so we are still unloading some equipment of the 8th Marine Regiment, uh, as well as some supply to the base. I'm not sure if we want to leave the 8th Marines there. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to leave them there, personally. I think they'd be a nice strike force. 70 experience, 99 morale. These guys are guys I want landing on islands and taking them back. So we will probably figure out what troop we want to put there as a, as a garrison. I, f I feel like, in terms of maintaining the strength of the the... Fiji line here. Um, Fiji has multiple divisions ashore here in good defenses with good amounts of supply. Pago is really the base of strength of ours from from uh, from these islands. So if I was to relocate the 8th Marines, I'd probably want to put them back on Pago. And Vavu and Tongatapu both have, well, Tongatapu doesn't have much, but uh, Vavu has a regiment as well, uh, mainly because they're sort of a linchpin. They link Suva and Pago from a short-range aircraft perspective as sort of a hub to quickly shift forces back and forth. I don't think it makes sense to eat up an entire regiment at Savi. I'd rather have that regiment either on Pago or on Vavu uh, in order to strengthen the defenses there, um, probably Pago. So I might try and pull these Marine Defense Battalions forward here. They're smaller units. They're better coastal defense units here. They've got coastal guns, things like that, um, to defend Savi, uh, and then rely on these on the fact that we'd have uh, interlocking fields of support with the dive bombers and level bombers on Pago to pound any enemy landing on Savi. I don't think it's likely he's going to land there again. Um, I, Savi just doesn't have that much value. Even if you look at the victory point value here, it's like six for the Japanese uh, Pago would make much more sense. It's worth uh, 325 to the Japanese. So that would be where they'd probably land uh, in the event of another another move there. Um, so we'll probably pull those Marines back and put a defense battalion forward, something small, but something enough to kind of keep an eye on the Japanese. We might also put a base force there because despite the fact that it's not super important from a victory perspective, it does have the ability to upgrade the airfield up to a level three, and it is within long range uh, PBY and bomber range of Canton Island, which would be my next desired target. I don't plan to go back and take every island in the Pacific. That would just take forever. But Canton is an island that does sit astride our strategic line of communications. It does threaten Baker Island up here to the north, which we, we retook a while back and has a garrison at. And it does allow float planes to really kind of get in and see what's going on in our shipping toward Australia if we don't give them a wide berth. And so Canton does make a it makes sense for a strategic counteroffensive, 
and I will be able to get a much better view of what the Japanese might have there uh, by basing float planes or bombers off of Savi. So there is value to taking that base as it does give us uh, actual insight into what's at Canton. Currently, everything else is too far out of range uh, to do that. If we take a look at anything else on the map, I don't know if there's anything else to look at. Um, Wars would be obviously still in enemy hands. Australia, nothing's changed there this turn. Uh, Batavia, I guess we should take a look at our troops there. So we are at just shy of 1,100 in terms of our assault value. Nothing's changed there. Our, our units here, our defensive units here, uh, looks like the disruption and fatigue is basically non-existent on most of these units that are fighting. We did have higher disruption and fatigue levels on some of our engineering units, which had been constantly bombarded by Japanese battleships. Uh, but as far as we can tell here, scrolling through these units, it looks like that last turn of no enemy naval bombardments allowed them all, with the exception of this coastal gun battalion, uh, to get their disruption and fatigue uh, back to uh, reasonable numbers here. So uh, hopefully that allows us to defend. The Japanese might have enough strength here to overwhelm us in one fell swoop or one major assault. We're trying to get the forts up to level five, but that probably won't happen. Uh, and uh, that's the situation at Batavia. A uh, situation more urgent in the Philippines at Clark Field here. You can see, look at all of these units with zero supply or less than 100 supply. Most of them are engineers and anti-aircraft units, uh, but it doesn't bode well for us holding this base much longer. Uh, the constabulary division here has 177 supply. They need 708 for a full supply. Uh, the 41st F uh, Filipino Army Infantry Division is at 212 supply. They're in relatively good shape at almost 50% of their required supply. You can see the disruption is starting to tick up. A third of the total strength at uh, the 31st is disrupted, um, 60 out of 160. Uh, the second constabulary has 21 dis uh, disabled out of just shy of 300 squads. So they're in good shape despite being low on supply. And then you've got the 11th Filipino Army Division, which is at 117th uh, disabled out of 50, with only 56 ready to fight. Now, some of that's because we did launch an assault to Clark Field that failed. So some of those uh, casualties or disabled troops are due to the fact that we had fought and lost. Uh, but that is going to increasingly see those numbers tick up, and, uh, and we are just not going to be able to hold that base. Could we use PBYs to pull the Marine Regiment out there? The 4th Marines, well, they're in remarkably good shape despite a third of their, less actually close to a fifth of their required supply. 90 USMC rifle squads, all of them ready to fight. Um, I'd have to change their headquarter to pull them out in the first place. That would cost 500 political points. I do have that number of political points available, but would it really be worth that to save a unit that's probably going to die? Like, how many would we get out? 20 or 30 or 40 rifle squads? And we'd spend all of our available political points? How far away is anything? We're 36 hexes from Rangoon. Could a PBY do a troop transport out that far? No. A PBY can't even reach there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone closer. Batavia is 40 away. Darwin is 47 away. Mole mine is 34 away, but I think that's too far. I don't know that I really want to move a PBY in there. Do we have any PBYs back here? I don't think we've got the range. If I move these guys down into mole mine, what 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 happens if we try and do that? Why is it not letting me? Okay. Yeah, we don't have the range to pull anyone out. So, so much for that, Gold. 40 plus, thanks for the follow. King of Beasts, thank you for the follow a little while ago. Uh, Thessa and, or Thess and me, 
And Man, thank you for the follow. Milt Down, thank you for the follow. And Ryan, thank you for the follow. So yeah, I don't think we realistically have any ability to pull these guys out. I don't have anywhere I would fly them. We were able to do some of that with the aircraft and other things like that when we still had Singapore. We kind of chained some of those units to pull them to Singapore, pull them to Meaden, and then pull them to to Rangoon. But it uh, doesn't look like anything's in range at the moment. Uh, so those Marines are going to die, uh, unfortunately. Uh, meanwhile, where are our ships that are going to be going to... Uh, places. <laughs> words words escape me at the moment. Uh, we have a task force, an air combat task force here, which will be on the map in six, in six days. Uh, the battle cruiser Repul Repulse and Carrier Illustrious are on the way to India. And the ship's under repair at Colombo. We've got the Prince of Wales which is still repairing pier side. Still just the cruise speed of one, max speed of three hexes, but cruise speed of one uh, with 39 flooding. Working on getting that system's damage under control and then going to pull it out to a port where it can repair more quickly. And I think that's mostly it. Uh, we've got some ships on the west coast of the U.S. Uh, that are working on being repaired. We also did just get the battleship Maryland back into service with her upgrade with uh, air search radars and things like that. So actually one battleship uh, currently in Los Angeles, which we could sail to Pearl to rejoin the fleet, add another battleship to that bombardment task force. Four more days and the Arizona will be ready. So, and she has also under, undergone a refit, which will give her her radars. So she is uh, recovering from damage taken at Pearl. She did not blow up. Uh, and so we'll have two battleships in four days. We'll probably build a task force around those two ships so they can rejoin the fleet while having adequate escorts. And what else do we have here? The battleship West Virginia is still 47 days away from returning to service. I'm not going to keep the other ships on the uh, West Coast long enough for that to be completed. So yeah, we'll have two more battleships joining the fleet uh, to go with the, what do we have, eight battleships over here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll have nine battleships in our battle fleet uh, for bombardment operations and other things like that. So good to see the uh, the Arizona and West Virginia ready to, ready to roll. Oh, sorry, Maryland? West Virginia? Maryland? Arizona for sure. I remember that one. Uh, Maryland uh, and, and Arizona. What's in Pearl in terms of what? Not much. Most of our fleet is actually in India. So we've got the seven battleships that are returning to Pearl. Currently, not a lot is in Pearl. We don't have any carriers. We don't have any battleships or cruisers currently in port. We don't even have any destroyers in port there right now. Uh, we do have uh, the battleship Tennessee, which is repairing enough to get to the U.S. West Coast. And then we've got the Battleship California, which is very badly damaged. She'll be out of action for about another year uh, from the Pearl Harbor attacks. And then the Destroyers Hull and Ralph Talbot are finishing up some overhauls, some some uh, refits. Uh, but then we've also got, you know, all the shipping that we already showed you before coming back from the Midway operations. So, f uh, what, four uh, anti-submarine warfare destroyers, seven battleships and some minesweepers and destroyers. a carrier and through light three light cruisers and some destroyers. And then we also have some heavy cruisers, which are returning as well. Uh, we've got four heavy cruisers, destroyers and transports. So Pearl is gun is, is kind of ish empty right now. Empty so far as a port with over 20 ships currently in its port can be those five subs, by the way, we may want to, so we've got the, all right. So we are actually doing some refits on submarines as well. Um, which once these refits are done, we'll, we'll send these guys out to operate off the coast of Japan because some of our submarines are returning now due to low, am low ammunition. But yeah, uh, that's the situation right now in our War in the Pacific game. What else do we have in terms of ship availability? What's coming online in the next few days? We've got uh, an AK and YMS. That's a yard minesweeper coming online tomorrow. 
And then we've got some destroyers coming in about nine days, the Long Island coming in about 15 days, and uh, that's about it right now. So I have to take a look at it and see what, what's the deal with the sync issue. Uh, there's got to be a sync issue with why the Intel was all jank. Uh, if we do take a look at the P40E's pilots, uh, Van Harlem is transferring off map one more day till he is transferred to the pilot pool. Uh, meanwhile, GN Drog, um, I guess, got a kill or something. He's, his experience level went up in any event. Uh, in the last battle. So he's up to 71. That's a pretty decent uh, pilot for the Dutch Air Force at this time in the game. And then we also have LJ or LI Snoke. This isn't like the guy from Star Wars, right? Um, who's also got five kills and is transferring off in the next day as well. And then we've got a new second lieutenant, Fun Funman, who's coming in to replace this, but they only have like two aircraft and quite a few more pilots than two. So do we have anything to upgrade them with? Like anything in the pools? We give them three Brewster Buffaloes, but probably not worth it. So what about the hurricane squadron here? How are they doing? They've got one active plane right now. They could upgrade to 17 B three, three nines. So we could actually get a decent size squadron if we had anywhere to upgrade them with because the b339s they're a buffalo version uh, but this squadron could upgrade to 12 of them um, which i would imagine 12 b339s might catch the enemy by more surprise than one or two hurricanes but it's we're probably better off reforming the squadrons later and uh yeah i wonder if it would make sense to just withdraw these guys Withdraw pilots for 60 days. They would reform, I believe, at Abaddon. Um, in 60 days, assuming that Batavia falls by then, which I'm sure it will. I mean, we don't really have any aircraft that we can fly in this squadron, so I'm going to do that. With all, withdraw all pilots for 60 days. So that fighter squadron is gone. And they'll be back in two months. How many crews here? No pilots? Um, yeah. I'm not going to withdraw the photo recon aircraft. That still gives me useful insight in the Java Sea. Yes, I dislike cats. The game is very complicated. Stratic, thanks for the follow. Mr. Moylet, thank you for the follow as well. Uh, World War II, one day at a time in the Pacific Ocean with 40 by 40 mile hexes. Every single merchant ship, transport, warship, every single fighter squadron, ground unit, like battalion size or better, all are modeled. Resources are modeled. Industry is modeled. Japan has to build every single engine that goes in their aircraft, in their industry, and manage that. Calling it a game is a stretch. It's a lifestyle, right, Dozed? Um, but yeah, it tells me that the Soviets are still not active, so I got to figure out what's going on with that, that ops report. That seems weird. Again, unless it's somehow pulled something from the... Uh, I guess I could delete all of the files and rerun the replay. Because it's possible that it's pulling something from when I loaded the... Uh, the... Oh my god, I can't remember the name of oper the operation to invade Japan. Downfall? Um, or not downfall. What was that? Oh my god. It was downfall. Okay. Um, it's possible it's pulling some info from there in into here. I don't know why it would, but clearly the combat result was right, but the SIGINT is, is non-existent, and then the, the actual operations reports are all janked. Is there a resistance mechanic? What do you mean by that gold in terms of like in China or other places? Which, by the way, we didn't look at China yet. So really quickly, just kind of going over what's going on in China. Uh, we are building up fortifications at Quilin. We're at almost to level four fortifications, which will be nice because I think the next main Japanese thrust is going to be along this rail line southwest through Quilin. Uh, so we do want to build up the defenses there. Uh, we have also moved some of our troops out uh, in front of Quilin. So we've got about... 2,600 assault value moved east of Quilin, and then they're building forts in the non uh, the non city hex here, up to level two for a lot of those uh, units here. And some of these guys have actually 
quite a few units that have upgraded or received reinforcements over 350 rifle squads here. Um, there's no resistance mechanic in China in the sense that like troops don't rise up per se, but there are victory point penalties if you don't properly garrison bases. Um, and so like, for example, uh, but I think that is all we're going to cover tonight for today's episode of War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition in our Let's Play series against Hartwig. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. As always, leave me your thoughts down below. I think this is an interesting one. It'll be, uh, I'm curious, one, there's a couple of things. I've got to make sure there's not a sync issue. Very strange with the intel and the, and the combat, uh, or sorry, the ops reports. I'm suspecting it's not a sync issue. I'm suspecting it's how the output of the saves files for when I tried to run downfall are inter interacting with this most recent replay because the combat results didn't change. And we kind of talked about that a little bit in the episode. So I have to just double check that. But um, I think the most interesting thing to see what will come of it was the Japanese APDs that might be rounding the uh, point near Rangoon to see if they're going to try and make a play into uh, into the heart of Burma, uh, if there might be a threat there, see if we can get some airstrikes in on of them, and if they land any forces effectively in our rear. And then just more generally to see how the enemy responds to our counteroffensive, right? Like, I'm going to guess Hartwig's going to view that Midway and Savi were undefendable, especially Savi, because it was like nestled in with multiple islands of ours with good airfields and obviously strong air attacks, which were mounted against him. So I don't think he'll make a move against Savi unless he brings the whole carrier battle fleet that far south in an effort to do some kind of raid. But that would consume a ton of fuel and a ton of resources for probably minimal gain. So he probably won't do that. He could stage something out of Midway, something small, or maybe he'll try to, you know, lure us into a carrier battle out there. I don't know if he's gone back to look at previous replays or other things like that to see if he knows or has any idea where our carriers are. Uh, but overall, I think we're inter entering a pretty interesting period in the game, kind of the period where the Allies start to be able to counterpunch relatively on uh, on equal terms with the Japanese, but not quite yet. Uh, so this should really be the, the beginning of an interesting phase in this game against Hartwig. In any event, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Leave your thoughts down below as always. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.